What's going on YouTube? Big Dog Brett, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, previously tried to make this video, had another microphone failure, um, but managed to get it fixed. It looked like it was more on the software side inside of the um, inside of OBS. So I think we got it fixed. We're going to give it a shot here, and uh, hopefully we can get through this a little bit quicker this time, because after another 20-something minute video, it was completely worthless. <laughs> I just spent all this time talking and talking and talking and not a, not a sound on the recording. Somebody was kind enough to text me and let me know as I was at the very end of it that I was actually live streaming the show instead of recording it like I should have been. <clears throat> so whomever that was, um, thank you so much for that. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go through this as quick as humanly possible. I do not want to... Uh, to try and go through this 20 minutes again. Uh, fortunately, I've already dress rehearsed it, so it should go pretty quick. So let's just jump right into it. Um, <clears throat> so Ohio State is currently ranked number three with 25 commits, two five stars and 14 four stars with an average ranking of nine one point nine two, I think it is, or eight two somewhere along those lines for their uh, for their for their current class. And I'm going to go through, um, and I'm going to talk about most of the players. I'm not going to talk about all of the players. Um, you, you start getting into the three stars, it kind of gets kind of you know wishy-washy. The tape isn't exactly exciting to watch, but you guys will see as we go through. There is there there is some real gems here. So <clears throat> this is a, a very strong recruiting class, and I want to especially when you compare it to last year. Um, if you compare it to last year among the rankings, the rankings show them they finished big. They finished third in the Big Ten somehow, and they finished number fourteen nationally. But in that class, they had three five stars. In this particular class, they've got only got two five stars, but they um, <clears throat> they are ranked uh, number three rather than number fourteen. The average rating in that class was point nine one eight seven, and the current rating is point. Uh, hold on, let's see real quick. The average right now is point nine nine one eight two. So statistically, very similar. Big difference in the class rankings between last year and this year. Um, they just they signed a ton of guys. So uh, last year, I believe they signed uh, 17, which was one of the reasons for their drop off, so to speak. The year before it was 26. <clears throat> year before that was 21. So if we go back to 2017, they were ranked number one in the Big Ten, and they were ranked number two nationally with an average rating of about 0.95. Um, the next year, pretty much carbon copied number one rank in the Big Ten, number two nationally, and averaged uh, 0.94. So very, very similar. Both of these classes, they signed um, numerous five stars. Their 2017 class, they signed five five stars. 2018, they signed three. 2019, they signed three. And this year so far, they've signed two. <clears throat> so if you're measuring the metri metric against number of five stars signed, um, it's kind of taken a downturn, but don't let that detract from the amount of talent on this team. There's a ton of talent on this team. So currently right now at let's see, five, three, that's eight, three more, 11, and two more. They've got 13 five stars, and some of these guys are borderline. Four stars are borderline close to being five stars. So there's a ton of talent here. Obviously, with Justin Fields, Justin Fields at the helm, they're doing quite well. All right, so... Um, let's go ahead and jump over to the next screen here. This way, this way you guys can actually see um, what I'm talking about as far as the players go. We're looking at Julian Fleming. <clears throat> Julian Fleming, five-star wide, five star wide receiver, number one in the state, number one in position, number two nationally. I'm going to come back to him. Um, he's worth his own moment. We'll come back to them. Let's talk about Paris Johnson, Jr., their number two guy in this class. He's six foot seven, 290 pounds, number one in the state of Ohio, uh, hometown guy, uh, has always, as far as I can tell, um, been a diehard for Ohio State Buckeyes. <clears throat> this guy's a monster. At six foot seven, two hundred ninety pounds. If you watch the tape on him, he just bullies people all over the place. Very strong, very uh, very very passionate young man. Uh, all all about finishing the play, which is great to see, especially out of an offensive tackle. And then you'll notice. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and point this out to you. So your number one spot wide receiver. Um, offensive guy, number two, offensive guy, number uh, number two, number or excuse me, number three, number four, offensive guy. You got a number, your number five guys, a safety, and number six, seven, eight are all offensive line, are all offensive weapons. So 
Uh, when I say offensive weapons, I mean guys for the offense. So you're looking at a wide receiver at the number three spot, uh, Jackson Smith, um, Najigba. This guy is incredible. Go watch him. Uh, take a few moments to, to watch the tape on this guy. He's absolutely insane. Um, now, if you look at G. Scott Jr., another player, uh, wide receiver position, who's going to be a talent and an asset to um, uh, Ohio State Buckeyes. He just, I mean, when, when, when three out of your top four recruits are wide receivers, that shows you there's a heavy emphasis to the University of Ohio, or excuse me, Ohio State, to, uh, to make sure that that receiving core is strong. Absolutely impressive. The safety, um, Lathan Ransom, all over the field, sideline to sideline speed, great football IQ, very impressive. Um, just just absolutely uh, what you want at that safety position. And then my favorite name on the whole roster here, Mr. Mookie Cooper. That's right, Mookie Cooper. I love this name. Uh, wide receiver. So one, two, three, four out of your top six guys are, are wide receivers. That's awesome. If you are an Ohio State fan, now here's the really interesting thing about Mookie Cooper. He is five foot eight and a half. That's right, five foot eight and a half. Most wide receivers are, they want you to be in that six foot range. Um, for you to be a four star ranked guy, to be the sixth highest ranked guy on the Ohio State Buckeyes roster as far as recruiting class goes, and you are five eight and a half. Um, you have to be a super talented player to get noticed at that <clears throat> at that height. Um, this guy absolutely fills the shoes of an elite receiver. Go watch his stuff. He, he's really incredible to watch. CJ Stroud. Stroud. We'll come back to him in just a moment. Luke Whippler or Whipper Whippier. Not sure how you pronounce his name. Um, but this guy, man, what what an athlete this guy is. Uh, just six foot. Four, might as well say six foot four, 285 pounds, four star receipt, number one in the state, number two in position. Um, this guy is is just a monster, huge guy, huge guy. And then we round out the top guys with uh, Cody Simon, <clears throat> uh, coming out of St. Peter's Prep, Jersey City, New Jersey, offensive linebacker, six foot one, 218 pounds, another guy with a super high football IQ, constantly standing in the backfield. Um, just anytime you dial up a play for this guy, he is all over it. So uh, just a very impressive um, top list of recruits here. Uh, this is actually the top nine on the first page. Uh, we'll go through the rest here in just a moment. <clears throat> I'm going to circle back to uh, C.J. Stroud. Uh, I'll, well, hold on. Let me back up, a quick, back up a quick second. Cody and Luke are both out of the state of New Jersey. You may have missed that. Um, but the thing you shouldn't have missed if you did catch that is that that's the number one in the state of New Jersey and the number three state of New, in the state of New Jersey. Um, both of these guys coming to Ohio is is basically Ohio State's way of saying we own the state of New Jersey and recruiting. That's our that's our territory. We're going to take what we want. Um, to get both of those guys, very very impressive. All right, let me jump back up to uh, C.J. Stroud, uh, Rancho Cucamonga, California. I love saying Cucamonga. I don't know why. It's just it's hilarious to me, Cucamonga. All right. Uh, Cucamonga, pro-style quarterback. I, don't let this don't let this, this title fool you. Um, pro-style quarterback, g given the C.J.'s ability set, uh, football IQ, uh, speed, strength, um, very, very impressive young man. Watching this guy throw passes is is really impressive. He doesn't stand in the pocket like a traditional pro style quarterback you would think would do. Very very capable of rolling out. He has he has a football IQ that I've only really seen been matched by about two or three other people this year as far as recruiting classes go. C.J. Stroud is able to move with the pocket, move outside of the pocket, look at his passing lanes, go through his progressions reading the defense as they're moving towards him and make the appropriate play. And not only can he make the appropriate pass and put the ball where he needs to put it, but he can see when a receiver is going to be open on a hard, a very, very hard target, hard, hard to pass to target. For instance, in some of his videos, and this is the most impressive to me, he'll be rolling to his right and he will not only throw cross body, but he will throw cross body with a receiver running in the opposite direction and hit him in stride on target. 
it's the kind of pass that as a defense you see that and you look at the coach and go, what? what there's nothing we can do with that. Um, I can absolutely see Ohio State wanting to turn this guy into a dual threat quarterback. He has the wheels. He has the ability. Number two in position. Um, I mean, the, the guy is absolutely incredible. And if you're going to follow up a player like Justin Fields with an elite guy, um, this is the kind of guy that could fill that role. So very impressive young man. Um, go watch his videos. Um, there's there's great, great tape out there on this guy. Super, super good uh, pickup for Ohio State. Now, let's talk about the gem of the whole shooting match here, Mr. Julian Fleming, uh, wide receiver, number one at position, number one in the state, number two nationally. Very easy to argue that this guy should be number one. I have never seen a wide receiver like this. Um, normally, you will see a wide receiver jumping up and down, trying to get people to throw the ball to them, not necessarily with Julian Fleming. This guy, it's like he has an aerial 360 camera positioned over the field that's giving him direct feed into his brain the whole time he's playing. He's reading the entire field, every bit of it. He's seeing where the defense is, he's seeing where the offense is, and he's looking for the appropriate play to put the ball in the end zone, even if it's not in his hands. If you watch tape on him, you'll actually see him waving to the cornerback, to quarterback, to throw to somebody else because he knows that guy's going to be open. Or he's waving to a running back, hey, follow me, I'm going to give you a blocking lane. And he will absolutely just wallop somebody that's in the way he doesn't have a problem laying a lick on a safety or a cornerback or a linebacker he he does not mind one off very very physical player blocks downfield extremely well and when i say blocks downfield he doesn't just kind of do a little bump or he doesn't just engage he hits them with the intensity that he's trying to knock them on their ear absolutely absolutely impressive Watching watching him play football, he shows an IQ, football IQ that, that you just don't see in college football at the high school level. You just don't. Uh, he, he has tons and tons of, of ability and talent just, just sitting in his pocket, and he can pull it out at any time and turn what looks like a bad play into a touchdown. If you take a few moments, go watch this guy. If you're not impressed, um, quit watching football because nothing's going to impress you. Absolutely incredible. All right, now we're going to jump over to Mr. Court Williams. One second here. Mr. Court Williams coming out of uh, Bellflower, California. By the way, Ohio State has done a great job of recruiting in the state and outside of the state. I'm going to run through them really quick. We've got Pennsylvania, Ohio, Texas, Washington, Arizona, Missouri, California, New Jersey, New Jersey again, California again, North Carolina, Ohio, Texas, Florida, Arizona, Ohio, Indiana, um, I guess that's Michigan, not sure, Maryland, Ohio, 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 and Michigan. Um, they tend to have pockets of where they, they seem to have really developed some contacts, and that's kind of what they stick to. Texas is about the only, maybe North Carolina, is the only southern states you really see on here. There's a ton of talent in those states, but for whatever reason, um, Ohio does not have to go down there to get, get the guys they need. They're doing a great job on the recruiting trail. All right, so let's talk about Court Williams, uh, outside linebacker, four-star, number 11 in position, number 16 in the state out of Bellflower, California. Um, to be ranked number 16 in the state is pretty impressive considering the population base in California and how big football is in some places there. Um, this guy is a, another sideline to sideline guy, six foot one. He's all over the field, very, very athletic player, an excellent pickup, and he will do well in the Ohio State scheme. Uh, Jacoby Kawan, Cowan, not sure if that's how you say that or not, <clears throat> but this guy's a defensive tackle at six foot five, 262 pounds, just a monster. Another another defensive tackle in Darian Henry, another four star defensive tackle at six foot four and a half. Might as well say six foot five, two hundred seventy nine pounds. To me, that's a little bit undersized because I'm used to the huge size of the players in the SEC. But these guys, uh, a couple of years into the program here, um, I'm sure they will get them up to up to size and up to speed. 
Um, Ryan White, Ryan Watts coming out of Little Elm, Texas, another four-star uh, player, six foot three, one hundred eighty-seven pounds as a cornerback, six foot two and a half, six foot three, six foot three. So as a six foot three player, I love seeing tall, long players as cornerbacks. To me, um, I think that this takes away the ability of most taller wide receivers. And when you've got a if you, a six foot one, a good six foot one cornerback can go up against a six foot three, six foot four wide receiver and beat them. A six foot three cornerback is going to shut down pretty much an entire side of a field if he's good, and this guy's good. So go watch him. Uh, Lejon Caveos, Cavezos, Cavezos. I'm not sure how you say your name, sir. Apologize in advance. Out of Bradenton, Florida. Pretty much the only southern one on here that I've seen. Uh, safety at six foot, one hundred and ninety-six pounds. He's a long way from home, guys. Uh, I don't know what they promised this kid to get him to go up there and play in the snow. Um, he's in for rude awakening when it comes to the weather. Um, uh, they probably promised him a national championship, and I can see how they would get it. <laughs> Uh, then they actually signed another four-star quarterback, Jack Miller. I haven't looked a whole lot into this guy, but he's more of a traditional uh, pro-style quarterback, six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds, pro-style pocket passer. Um, I, I think this guy will play backup to uh, to C.J. Stroud <clears throat> and Justin Fields. Uh, then we look at uh, uh, the only tight end they signed. They signed one tight end and they signed one running back in this entire class. Uh, I know tight ends aren't exactly. Talked about as much as they should be, but with the RPO becoming more and more popular, tight ends are developing better, bigger and better roles. This is their highest rated three-star player. Could borderline be a four-star. Uh, Joe Royer, uh, six foot five, 225 pounds, traditional size for a tight end. Uh, guy has a guy, guy has a lot of talent, uh, but he also needs to develop a lot, and they can certainly do a good job with that at uh, Ohio State. Uh, then we start getting into the three stars, um, offensive guard, offensive tackle, outside linebacker. These are all huge guys, six foot five. And, and pretty much from here on out, with the exception of one guy, everybody's six foot three or higher. Uh, Josh Fryer, six foot five, 305 pounds. Uh, Grant Tutant, six foot seven, 320 pounds, offensive tackle, another huge guy. Mitch Melton, uh, six foot, outside linebacker. Watch this, outside linebacker at six foot three. Holy cow, huge guy. 235 pounds, athletic, um, not exactly the fastest in the world, but still get some good speed on him. And then you've got uh, Mayan, or, or Mayan, I'm not sure you say his name, it's probably Mayan. Uh, Williams, the only running back they signed, 5'10", uh, 210 pounds. I would have expected to see uh, at least a four-star running back somewhere in here, given, given how they run their play style. I think they could really benefit from a higher-rated uh, running back, but maybe they see something in this guy. Um, and then you've got Ty uh, Hamilton, three-star player, six foot three, two hundred and fifty pounds, uh, strong side defensive end. Jacob James, um, offensive guard, six foot five, two eighty-five. Trey Larue, uh, our offensive tackle, six foot eight. Good grief, three hundred fifty-five pounds. This guy's a monster. I would not want to line up against that guy every snap of the ball. I mean, think about that: six foot eight, three hundred fifty-five pounds. You got to push that guy around for sixty minutes. You're going to be exhausted. Uh, Jake Siebert, a kicker. I love seeing kickers signed, man. Uh, I think a lot of schools don't um, – a lot of kickers don't give the, the type of uh, attention to kickers that they should. A lot of games come down and they hinge on a kick. Um, the number one scorer of all time at the University of Georgia is a kicker, and it's that way at most schools. But for some reason, they don't, they don't get recruited like you, like you would think. Um, and then let's look at uh, Cameron Martinez, uh, an athlete. This guy's basically a dual threat quarterback, a running back, kind of rolled into one. This guy can make passes, has a great football IQ, um, downhill runner. And if there's a gap there that's big enough to slip a piece of paper through, he can get through it. Um, this guy's a four star. He's a hard commit, hasn't signed yet. But I, I think this guy's going to sign, and if he does, I think this guy could fill the role of the uh, the running back, like I was talking about. The guy's a true athlete. So, and after going through 